What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 7th of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in over these next couple of weeks here in March. And we're also going to be talking about this whole Elon Musk situation that's going on right now with the rumors of him possibly being suspended as the CEO of Tesla. We're going to be talking about that here in a couple of minutes, but before we do hop into these topics of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, the trading update videos, the market update videos, the personal finance, the trading tips videos, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. It really does support the growth of the channel, and if you're new to the channel and new to the community, feel free to go down below to the description box and join our 100 percent free discord group chat as well as our 100 percent free facebook group i guarantee you guys you will find value in those platforms 100 percent guarantee you that so let's talk about what's going on right now in the overall market starting off here with the spx so with about 17 minutes left here in the market, we can see the SPX is down about 1%, down about $26.20. The Dow Jones Industrial Industrial Average Tongue Twister, guys, down about $230, down about 0.85%. And the NASDAQ Composite, guys, down a whopping $90 today. So far, down about 1.25%. So it's looking like, guys, we're going to end up closing the day today on a red day. And for those of you guys that watched my video yesterday, I was talking about how the overall markets, especially the SPX, have shown indications of a further sell-off, right? We talked about how we got that double top a couple of days ago that we can see here on a closer term chart. We can see the double top here, which was the first indication that we were selling off. The second indication that we got a couple of days back as well was the break below the 50 SMA support and the EMA. That was the second and third indications, I guess you can say. The, th the fourth indication that we got, which is what we were looking for a couple of days ago, was the break below the support of this channel right here, the uptrend channel that we were trading in over the past couple of weeks pretty much, right? And what I was looking for today and what I talked about in yesterday's video was the break below this 50 SMA support here on the 184 hour chart, which would be the fourth indication that we're continuing to push down. And that's exactly what we ended up seeing today on the 7th of March with about a 1% push to the downside for the SPX. So Right now, guys, I'm sure you already can tell here from this chart here, and of course, if you've been doing your own technical analysis and research, we are really selling off pretty hard in the SPX and the overall market. So what am I watching now in terms of the SPX? Now that we've gotten about four indications that we're pushing down, the next indication I want to see for further sell-off in the SPX would be a break below this previous uh, resistance, which is acting as a new support right now at about 2740. And for those of you guys that don't know, whenever an ETF, a stock, an index, or future is on an uptrend pattern, is pushing up, making higher highs, like the SPX was here, you know, the points that we're pushing up to, those are obviously going to be resistance levels if we do end up breaking below them. And of course, if we're a Above them, like we are right now, they're going to be support levels if we're pulling back down towards them, if that makes any sense, right? And we can see right now we're pulling back down towards that old resistance, which again now is a new support level. So we're testing this area. It seems like we're having some difficulty breaking below it here towards the market close today. We can see literally right at that point, guys, no lie, take a look, 27.39, we ended up bouncing bouncing here about an hour ago at 2.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that happens to be 
literally right at that level, 2739, you know, where we topped off back in the beginning of February in 2019. So this is the level that we're currently holding now and probably going to hold until the market closes here in about 13 minutes in the SPX. And that's what I'm going to be watching for tomorrow morning during doing my futures analysis, doing, you know, the pre-market analysis in terms of the three major indices here. And of course, looking at large cap stocks, how are they performing? Are they selling off or some of the big name companies out there selling off heavily pre market hours, which would probably correlate to the futures of the major indices selling off. You know, these are things we're going to be keeping an eye on tomorrow morning to see where are we headed over the next couple of weeks in terms of the SPX. So my prediction, guys, you know, if we do end up breaking this level down here, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, we might be forming a head and shoulders pattern. And we can see this would be the left shoulder in that scenario. This would be the head. And let's say we break this level tomorrow and then we start to see some pushback because at that point, we're going to be very oversold in terms of the SPX. So if we do end up pushing down tomorrow, maybe we see a day or two of pushback up next week. That's going to look like a head and a shoulder pattern, right? And for those of you guys that don't know about head and shoulder patterns, take a look deeper into that pattern. That's a very basic pattern that a lot of people out there probably know, but a lot of the beginners out there probably don't know. And it's one of the patterns that we like to identify here in terms of uh, our channel, my channel here on YouTube and our community. Um, you know, again, link down below the Discord chat. And, uh, you know, that's what I see is currently happening in terms of the SPX. So keep an eye, major level right here. But as of right now, all signs are pointing to more red in the S&P 500. Now, the Dow Jones, guys, very similar, right? We're holding that old resistance at about uh, 25,400 as a new support level. We're right at that level right now. And just like the SPX, guys, we had multiple, multiple, multiple indications that we're selling off in the Dow Jones. If we take a look here on the 10-day, 30-minute chart, we can see that little resistance here at about $26,200. It wasn't really a double top for me like the SPX was actually let me go to that 20 day chart well you know it wasn't really a double top it was more of like a strong resistance here a couple of tops we can see one two three four different tops right around that 26,000 level of resistance and from there you know we got that first indication of the strong resistance meaning that we could be potentially selling off we got that sell off below the 50 SMA and the EMA which were both support levels here on the 30 day 90 minute chart we can clearly see that so that was two indications we're selling off and obviously we broke below the support of that channel that we've been talking about over the past couple of videos and weeks honestly here on the channel which would be the third indication and now today just like the SPX guys we ended up breaking that 50 SMA support level on the 184 hour chart and again like I mentioned about a minute ago we're currently holding that old resistance as a new support level. So what am I watching for the Dow Jones? Very similar to the SPX. I want to see, are we going to break the support level and sell off even further? And from there, we're going to be testing roughly about the $25,000 level, which would potentially be the next support we're heading to, or we will be heading to, you know, in terms of the Dow Jones. But right now, everything is pointing to red, everything is pointing to more potential selling in the overall markets here, especially with the Dow Jones. Now, let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite, guys, which absolutely got obliterated today. We can see it's falling even further from the beginning of this video just simply 10 minutes ago. We can see from about 1.2% when we started off the video, we're down about almost 1.4%. Today, in terms of the NASDAQ, we're down nearly $100, and we pretty much broke the entire uptrend pattern for the NASDAQ. We blew through the floor of that support level here on the 30-day, 90-minute chart that we were trending above just simply two days ago. We can clearly see we were at the support level for you know a couple of days here. We can see it's a valid support level from the past. Back, you know, from the beginning of February, we held it once, twice, you know, three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a bunch of different times here. And we clearly broke through that about yesterday and heading into today with the big nearly 100 point loss that we're currently seeing. So right now, guys, you know, the NASDAQ is looking like it's getting pretty pretty ugly especially especially if we do end up breaking this 180 SMA support level which it does seem like we're still holding above here towards the close of the market so tomorrow is going to be a very very big um you know telling tale of where we're going to be headed over this next week because if we do end up breaking this critical support guys we're going to be headed back down to about 6950 which would be the next support we're looking at since it was a previous resistance back in the middle of uh, november so just keep an eye on these levels guys but right now obviously all the indices especially the nasdaq they're looking like falling nine with more potential selling judging off of these technicals that we are seeing you know in the major indices and that's what i'm really just seeing right now guys more red more red and i'm sure a lot of you guys know whenever the markets are red I'm trading TVIX, which is exactly what I ended up trading today on the 7th of March in 2019. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX is my go-to ETF whenever the markets are getting crushed or whenever the markets are just simply downtrending and selling off for the day, which is exactly what we ended up seeing today, obviously, with the charts that we just saw. You know, the SPX, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. Let's just take a look very quickly on a one-day, one-minute basis. Basis. They all sold off, or one day, one minute basis rather, they all sold off pretty heavily today, especially in the morning where I actually ended up trading TVIX. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX is an ETF that trades primarily based upon the SPX, the S&P 500. And obviously, whenever the SPX, the S&P 500 is selling off, TVIX is going up in price. So you guys can obviously see where I ended up trading TVIX. If I traded it this morning, I ended up popping in right on this big sell-off that we got from about 27.66 all the way down to about 27.42, which is about a 24-point sell-off. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can imagine a 24-point sell-off in the SPX. That might have opened up a 6-7% profit in TVIX. And you're exactly right, because that's exactly what ended up happening. From $32 up to about $35, actually no, $34.60, that opened up a 7% margin of profit in TVIX. And you don't really see charts like this all the time, guys, where it's literally straight up, no pullbacks, no consolidation, no stopping. This is literally a stock chart that went from 9.33 a.m. at $32.00 all the way to about 9.52, literally 20 minutes. It took a 7% move in 20 minutes with minimal, minimal breaks, minimal, minimal consolidation points. You can literally count one, two here. Straight shoot, straight shoot up chart here in terms of TVIX. And I know a lot of you guys have been following me for a while. You know, when I'm day trading, I'm mostly aiming for a quick little one, 2% profit. Sure, I could have got 5%, 6% on TVIX here, but if I told you that, I would be flat out lying because I'm more conservative, guys. I don't like to get as much profit per trade because a lot of times that I try and do that, you know, I end up getting bit in the butt and I do end up giving profit back to the markets, which is not what you want to do, right? You want to be able to be consistent, be conservative. You don't have to be conservative. You don't have to do exactly what I do. Of course, you do your own strategy, whatever works for you. But I'm just here telling you guys what I personally do. And I'm more conservative and I feel comfortable taking, you know, a 1% profit sometimes on a day trade, maybe 2%. And I know a lot of you guys have seen me take a 3-4% profit sometimes. But today, specifically, guys, I literally got in and out within five, six minutes on this TVIX move. And I took about a 1.5% profit. And you can clearly see with the 7% margin that was available, 1.5 is pretty, pretty conservative. And that's exactly what I personally ended up doing um, today, right? Very simple. So TVIX was the day trade that I made today. And I know a lot of you guys in the Discord chat also traded TVIX. So if you did, 
Congratulations, you did very well today because TVIX is still climbing at the close of the market right now. We can see we're clearly up almost 8% on this ETF as of right now. And another one that I actually took my profits on today just to play it safe because I was already up nearly about, I think like 2% or something, was J&J. &J. And J&J &J is a stock that I've been holding now for about 2-3 weeks. I got in back here at about 135, 135.50. And I've been simply holding this one, you know, as a swing trade, right? And my goal was to sell at about $140. But today I actually saw J&J &J selling off pretty strongly and pretty heavily this morning, as did a lot of stocks because the markets were selling off. And I kind of did panic, not panic because... I, I was already up. I'm already up, guys. Like we, I can show you guys right here from about 135.50 up to about where we were this morning. I was already up a good amount, about 2-3%. So I just wanted to lock in those profits while I did have them and potentially re-enter at a better price point since we did see, you know, it's, it's selling off very, very strongly. So I thought it was wise here to take my profits, and I did take my profits at about $138.65, as I did see some very aggressive selling because I didn't want to lose, you know, a good amount of those gains that I did have simply by you know, just holding through. So what am I, what am I going to do right now, guys? I'm potentially going to re-enter into J and J if we do see a hold above this 50 SMA support over these next couple of days of trading. So overall, guys, that's what I ended up doing today. I just took my profits on J and J about a two, two point two percent profit there, and I ended up day trading T V I X for a nice quick in and out one point three, one point four percent profit. So that is what I did today. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys ended up doing in terms of your trading. And now let's talk about what went down today with Elon Musk and Tesla stock. Let's get into it. So we all know by now Tesla and Elon Musk have problems with the SEC, right? Elon Musk does not like the Securities and Exchange Commission whatsoever. And for those of you guys that have been following Tesla, Tesla stock, and just keeping up with the company over the past couple of months, you saw that a couple of months back in the middle of 2018, Elon Musk sent out a tweet that, Tesla will go private at $420 funding secured. And pretty much this violates a lot of different laws with the SEC because it can influence, you know, investors to push the stock price up and it just influences the stock price in general. And since then, obviously, you know, Elon Musk came to, you know, an agreement with the SEC. He's going to have his tweets monitored. There's going to be a lot of monitoring with him and the public in terms of communication, right? And we saw a couple of weeks back, Elon Musk and Twitter back at it again with a bunch of more drama and him really just poking fun, I think, at the SEC, really just like, you know, you know what I mean, right? He, I feel like he's just poking fun I feel like he's just trying to to bother them on purpose or something. I know you guys relate and understand what I'm saying. And you see the tweet up here on the screen right now, and I'm reading it off of my phone. This tweet on the 19th of February is what the SEC is currently investigating and what the SEC, you know, wants to really just get Musk in trouble for again. And we can see 4,000 cars being loaded in San Francisco for Europe. This was before the March 1st trade deadline, which is obviously irrelevant now because it was pushed back. But back towards the end of February, just a couple of weeks ago, you know, Tesla was trying to push as much of its cars, you know, back to Europe and over to China. We saw all of those, you know, big boats taking the cars over there to avoid, you know, further, um, you know, uh, what's it called, tariffs on the cars because we all know Elon Musk and Trump and, you know, not really Elon Musk, but Trump and China, they were, he was going to raise the tariffs from China, um, you know, 10% to 25% and to avoid paying that, Musk was trying to send as much cars over there as possible, which does make sense, right? And at the bottom of that tweet, you can see here again, Tesla made zero cars in 2011, but will make around 500,000 cars in 2019. So just like the funding secured at 420 
tweet. This is a tweet that can influence investors out there to push the price of the stock up. And this is obviously violating those terms that him and the SEC came to a couple of months ago, which is why the SEC is investigating him again, guys. So I feel like Elon Musk right now is just out of control, right? We obviously all know that this man is just out of control. He does not care. He likes poking fun at the SEC. He likes to do little things and try to get away with it. But even though he can't get away with it, you guys know what I mean. He just loves, loves just playing this cat and mouse game, you know, with the SEC. So Musk is facing significant fines for his violation with the SEC due to his tweets regarding the production forecast for the Model 3 part. Part of his agreement with the SEC was to have any public communication monitored, especially his tweets. And the fact that this tweet was sent out just shows that they're not being monitored whatsoever. The Tesla staff, employees, whoever is monitoring Elon Musk really isn't doing their job. Either they don't give a crap, Elon Musk doesn't give a crap, and he does it behind their back. Who knows what's happening, right? But they're just not being monitored in, in terms of his tweets and his public communication, right? And obviously, Tesla is being opened up to new lawsuits that may cost the company a lot of money that they could be putting back into their business, which crucially 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 needs as much funding and as much money as possible right now to really push out the model threes the model y now we're seeing is going to be a new car coming to you know the company the new version of the model y so this is just pretty stupid in my opinion it's bringing unwanted attention to tesla as a company and, and honestly elon musk could be suspended as the tesla ceo due to this because this is his second violation in under one year with the sec and for those of you guys especially those of you all in the stock market investors traders whatever you know the sec is is, is an organization that does you should not want to mess with them right you want to abide by their laws abide by their rules and really just play it out smoothly right and elon musk he's doing the opposite right he likes to cause as much friction as possible he likes to piss off the sec and he just likes all of the drama so this is just the news right now guys you know the tweet that i just showed you the investigation is going on and take it for what it is right elon musk he potentially could be suspended or this could blow over he might not get suspended but they will get fined 100 percent and they will have lawsuits no matter what i personally think so what do you guys think about this right is he going to get suspended what is going to happen but in terms of the price of the stock Tesla today, we saw it actually went up to about $284. And then we saw this news came out. I forget, did it come out like middle of the day today? It must have because at this point, $283 per share. It tanked under $9, roughly about $9, $10 per share. In the matter of about from 12 p.m. Eastern Standard to about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard, in the matter of three hours, Tesla stock fell about 3% to the reaction of this news. And actually, guys, excuse me, we're seeing some crazy unusual, not really unusual, but some crazy movement right now aftermarket hours in terms of Tesla stock. Literally, when I was recording this video in between the clips um, from the previous clip to this clip in this video, this stock popped up. Look at this green candlestick right here from 267 or 276 rather at the close all the way up to 283. So that was a big, big, big move in about one, two minutes here, 2.3%. And now we're consolidating right here. So let me actually see what the live news is saying here if there's anything um, you know, new. Not really seeing anything uh, new here, but that's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool to see the stock shot up all the way. But anyway, what do you guys think about this? Please, please, please let me know. The, uh, you know, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think. And let's talk about very briefly what stocks and ETFs I'm watching over these next couple of days and weeks here in March of 2019. And just to keep it very simple with you guys. We're back in that state of the market where I'm kind of getting nervous to swing trade stocks again, especially with the overall market, especially the SPX, showing more potential signs of a sell-off. And by this, I mean, you know, just like back in October and November and December, back in 2018 when we had this huge sell-off, you know, this wasn't a time 
to swing trade stocks. And obviously, the technicals aren't looking as bloody as this. Obviously, it's very clear. But this could be the beginning of more selling off, which scares me to buy and hold specific stocks as swing trades, which is primarily why I did end up selling off J&J &J today. And yes, I'm still holding Coca-Cola with an average at about $45. And I'm not too heavily into that position. I have not yet to add more to that position. But those are the only or really that's the only one that I'm holding right now in terms of swing trading. So in terms of you know what I'm watching guys over these next couple of days, I'm really going to be just looking at some inverse ETFs and market ETFs that trade based upon the overall movement of the market like TVIX. If we continue to sell off here, guys, you know, I'm just going to be trading in and out of TVIX every single day like I was in between, you know, October, October, and, you know, December of 2018. Like I'm sure a lot of you guys already know who are watching the channel back during these time periods, I was literally selling or trading it rather it feels like every single day of the week I was trading in and out of TVIX so if the markets continue to sell off tomorrow you know this gonna that's gonna open up a ton of margin in terms of TVIX and especially next week let's say the markets continue to sell off they continue to sell off this is gonna push up and open up a ton a ton of opportunity in terms of day trading so TVIX guys is actually the go-to number one ETF right now that I am watching over these next couple of days of course some other stocks you know including Tesla Tesla's a stock that doesn't actually do too poorly when the markets are selling off, believe it or not, right? We can see back in, you know, the October, December days, Tesla stock actually did very well. We can see from 260 up to about $375. That's where it went while the market as a whole was selling off. Am I saying that Tesla stock is, you know, a stock that's, uh, you know, sell-off proof, you know, when the markets are selling off? Absolutely not. But just judging off of previous, you know, market movement, that is what I see, and if the markets do end up selling off further and I notice Tesla's pushing up, you know, this could be an opportunity for me to hop into Tesla as a potential day trade, maybe even as a couple of days, you know, as a swing trade if the technicals are looking good. And as of right now, guys, you know, we're holding above that 275 support very nicely. And honestly, if we start to push back up into the 280s, mid 280s maybe the 290s that's going to be a good sign that we're slowly heading back up to the top resistance portion of this channel that we notice here on tesla stock so i'm also watching cron here ticker symbol c r o n we noticed the margin of profit opened up in cron from the sell-off at about 24 dollars down to about 22 dollars that opened up a nice 10 percent margin and we're still holding above that 50 sma nicely so i would like to see a potential pop up here so I can profit on the upside here in terms of ticker symbol C R O N. And uh, guys, when I'm telling you that's all I'm really watching right now in terms of aftermarket for tomorrow, that is what I'm watching really just cron and TVIX because I've had the experience when the markets are selling off, I do very well day trading TVIX and I'm just keeping it real with you guys. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of tomorrow. I'm sure there'll be there'll be more opportunities once the futures open up tomorrow morning. We get to see what the markets are it's likely going to open up and of course we're going to be seeing you know large cap stock movement some other stock movement here on my watch list and that's going to open up even more opportunities but at the time right now at the end of the uh, of the market you know that's what I'm personally watching for tomorrow and if we take a look at some other charts you know none of these charts are screaming you know as a buy right now right we can see Walmart is not looking too well you know it didn't hold that trend that we wanted it to square you know, I might as well just take this one off my watch list. This one's looking pretty bearish right now, especially if it breaks the 180 SMA. You know, another one we called out yesterday, Spotify. Spotify is not looking too well, uh, not looking too great right now. So until these charts, you know, start to open up with some upwards movement, I'm not really going to be looking to hop into them, right? We can see Cat here sold off pretty heavily. You know, Billy's not looking too great either. So I want to see, 
you know, some push to the upside in these stocks before trading them. That's just what I'm looking at right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys ended up trading today, what stocks you're watching. I would love to know. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter. All of those are linked down below. And don't forget, get into our 100% free Discord and Facebook group. Those are both linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.